Uh, well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our sake symposium, which is entitled uh, Understanding the Unique Aspects of Sake. Uh, I'm Helen McNaughton. I'm the chair of the Japan Research Centre here at SOAS. And for those of you who may be new to SOAS, we are the largest um, uh, hub of Japanese studies scholars and students in the UK and possibly in Europe as well. And we pull together all the members, students and academics across SOAS into our Japan Research Centre uh, to work on research topics, but also like tonight to deliver a diverse range of uh, public seminars, lectures and, and events relating to Japan. So first I'm going to introduce and welcome all our speakers tonight. Um, we have five speakers, which is not our usual format, so this is something a bit exciting. Um, and they're all going to speak um, for about 10 minutes maximum each. Um, so first I'd like to very much welcome Saura, Saura Koichi-sama. Um, he is the 13th generation owner of um, Urakasumi Sake Brewery in Japan. Um, he's the vice president of Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association and also the founding chairman of Sake Samurai as well. And he's come all the way from Japan to be with us tonight, so please welcome him. So he's going to be talking later about the uh, heritage and the future of sake making. Then we have um, Shimizu uh, Yusaka-sama. He's the Minister of Finance at uh, the Embassy of Japan here in London. So he's going to be talking us through the internationalization of sake. So welcome, Mr. Shimizu. And then we have Ichihashi Hirohisa-sama, and he is Director of the Food Division um, at Jetro London, so Japan, uh, Japan External Trade Organization. And he's going to be talking about sake export from Japan and then overview of the UK sake market as well. So welcome. <laughs> and then we have Chris Ashton. Summer, I said summer for everybody else. Um, director of the International Wine Challenge, IWC. Um, and he's going to be talking about international sake promotion through his um, w IWC uh, wine platform. And I'd particularly like to thank him and Sake Samurai for their very generous sponsorship of the sake reception. I'm sure this is the most important point why you came along tonight. Uh, immediately after this at 6.30, we will have a, a sake reception. Please wear your stickers that you've been given so that you can get into the reception. Um, it's going to be immediately across the building, but we can all go together, so I'll announce it again at the end of the, the seminar so nobody gets lost. And then last but not least, we have Yoshitaki Rie Sama, who is, um, many of you will know, is... <laughs> is the sake woman in the UK of uh, Sake Samurai UK. Um, so, it, and also the rep of the Japan Sake and Shoshu Makers Association. And it was really Rie's idea for this event tonight. And uh, we started off just saying she'd come along and give a talk on sake, but it's grown into a symposium. So all thanks to her for arranging all the speakers and the lineup. I'd also like to thank um, the Japan Foundation for co-hosting the event. Um, in a minute, Director General Mana Takatori is going to say a few words. But before that, I'd just like to say that the Japan Foundation um, has been really integral in helping the JRC in the last two years, since 2017. So together, we set up our JRC Sports Symposia series, and we've had three events so far, one on Tokyo 1964 and 2020 Olympics, one on the history of Paralympic sport in Japan since 64, and our most recent one on the history of rugby, the very long history of rugby in Japan, obviously looking forward to this year's Rugby World Cup. Um, so at all of those events, sport and sake proved to be this very winning team. And uh, thanks to Mana and Rie and myself working quite closely together <laughs> on that. But tonight, for one night only, we decided to just drop the sports element and just focus on sake itself. So that's what we're doing. But um, I really want to thank Mana and Rie uh, for their support of the Japan Research Center for the last two years. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Mana now and then to the speakers. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good evening, everyone. <laughs> and uh, a few words from me as well. But uh, Helen already has explained everything. So we are very pleased to co-organize this special event once again with Japan Research Center SOAS. 
And some of you may know that the Ato Japan Foundation, uh, the, our main, uh, the primary uh, objective is to uh, promote friendship and uh, understanding between Japan and the UK and beyond. And as in the part of this, as some of you have already attended, that now we are halfway through our annual uh, Japanese uh, film touring program, as well as uh, the, this week we are celebrating the works by Japanese contemporary authors and writers with Japan Now uh, program this week. So why sake? <laughs> Because um, it is, again, as usual, uh, this is one of our primary objectives to uh, promote the friendship and uh, the understanding, especially this time in the very British way or the very uh, British of fashions, that is, with alcohol, <laughs> sake, right? <laughs> Okay, so as some of you already know, for, for us, many of the Japanese, um, the sake uh, plays an uh, ever-present role uh, in our life. And uh, for example, uh, just um, with spring just around the corner, uh, many of us will be reminded of the hanami parties, cherry blossom viewing parties, uh, sitting underneath the, the cherry blossom in a park with your loved ones, friends and colleagues, sharing a bottle or two or three or more bottles of sake. And for others, uh, what uh, comes in mind first could be uh, the warm bottle, warm carafe of sake sharing with your friends uh, on a cold winter night to just chase away the winter coldness. But beyond this, uh, sake has a um, very long and rich tradition. Um, for example, uh, the, in the, uh, breaking, the act of breaking the barrel of sake uh, to mark the, uh, the opening of an event is still continued to present today. And it is often, uh, sake is often consumed as a part of rituals at shrines. So, as Helen introduced, today we have the five distinguished speakers who will be uh, sharing their expertise with us. Okay. And uh, from me, uh, I'm also uh, very pleased to be once again in partnership with SOAS. And uh, from me as well, uh, I'm very, uh, my great appreciation to our generous supporters. Thank you very much indeed. And I do hope that uh, through this symposium, we all be able to consider sake as not a drink to be drunken, but uh, something more influential, more deep something. So thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Koichi Sawa from uh, Urakasumi Sake Brewery. And uh, thank you very much for coming to this uh, Sake Symposium. And at first, I'd like to express my sincere thanks to uh, SOAS and Japan Foundation to have this opportunity for introducing many aspects uh, of Sake and under, for uh, deepening, deepening the understanding of the distinguished guests. And at first, I'd like to introduce myself. So my, uh, I'm the 13th generation of Urakasumi Sake Brewery. It is a family business and which was established in 1724. And as uh, <coughs> I was I introduced as I was a founding chairman of the Sake Summer Association. It started more than 10, more than 10 years ago, and also I'm the vice uh, president of Japan Sake, Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association, this is called JSS, and uh, 
especially I'm in charge of the uh, committee of the association of uh, domestic and international promotion of sake. At first, I'd like to explain about what is sake. And many of you know, of course, uh, sake is made primarily from rice and water, and it is a fermented beverage, not dist distilled, and especially using a technique of multiple parallel fermentation, it is uh, saccharization and fermentation uh, happen together in the fermentation barrel. It is uh, result in uh, creation of very higher, con higher alcoholic content up to 20%, uh, 20%. And the sake is brewed using microorganism uh, like koji mold and uh, koji mold and yeast. And also we can enjoy sake warm and chilled. At first about the ingredients, uh, very quick explanation about ingredients. The one is rice. The usually we have two varieties of Japanese rice classification. One is uh, table rice. The other is sake rice. Usually we don't eat sake rice. It is uh, developed uh, only for sake making. And it is called sakamai. And the characteristics of sakamai is ex larger and softer than ordinary table rice and the more usually more expensive than table rice. And also the second is water. The water quality is important because mineral content of water affects the taste of sake and uh, semi-hard water is usually ideal but these days we use a soft uh, water and uh, lower iron and magnesium, magnesium, magnesium uh, content is important. So especially we, uh, we have to avoid the iron. It usually it gives the color to the uh, sake. So when you use, uh, cho uh, choose the uh, water, we choose the uh, water is uh, low or no, uh, iron. And uh, as you know, Japan, we have lots of uh, rain. So we have a Japanese rich with high quality ground, especially groundwater across the country. And uh, ingredients number three is koji. Actually, yeah, this picture is, uh, you see, koji rice. It is steamed rice inoculated with koji mold. And enzymes of the mold convert rice starch into sugar and yeast feeds on sugar. <coughs> and yeast, we uh, call yeast kobo in Japanese. It is a particular kind of yeast. Uh, it is called saccharomyces cerevisiae and it converts sugar to alcohol. And Servicie is Latin word and, and Japanese word kobo. It means mother of fermentation. So th th this is also the picture of uh, kobo. And uh, very special aspects of sake is we use the two important elements of Japanese nature and culture. Water and rice, uh, it is very important for the, Jap uh, for the Japanese people. And so, called, so, in other words, it is very hot of Japan. And because the ingredients is so important, so, uh, and the sake making procedure is very complicated. It means sake is made with much care and time. So, it become a import, became an important offering to the gods. You can see. You can see this is uh, offerings to the gods. So in, inside of this bottle, that, that is sake. So sake is so, so important crops, important for Japanese people. So, and we take much time and care, so sake is become the important uh, offering. 
So, like in conclusion, so because of that background, history uh, and the very long history of sake, and since the sake history of sake started more than 2,000 years ago, since then sake has played a central role in Japanese life and culture. And uh, strongly connected with traditional ceremonies like a uh, wedding, wedding ceremony. So you can see that man has a uh, special uh, sake, sakazuki, and uh, both of them uh, drinks, uh, sip the sake in order to like uh, <coughs> okay, okay, a contract of marriage. And uh, also, like this uh, picture, sake is an uh, important and uh, integral part of the Japanese diet. So, sake is, has long history and a very important background for Japanese people and the Japanese culture. So, I'd like to explain a bit about the significance of sake producer, uh, that it means, uh, like me, the sake producers. So sake is sake making business is the oldest industry in Japan. It is said that the uh, sake industry started about 600 or 700 years ago. And and the next thing is sake producer we call Kuramoto is exist spread over the country approximately now 1300 uh, Sake producers now produce sake in uh, throughout the Japan. And usually, uh, sake making business is a family business. And many of, many of us has a history of more than 100. And some sake breweries have more than 300 or 400 history. And uh, Sake business is is uh, very influential in, in the local society, so we have close relationship with and influence on local society and culture. So, however, now uh, we have some problems. So this is uh, you know this the line is a uh, number of the people more than 20 e years over. And uh, this graph is a per capita consumption of whole alcoholic beverage. Uh, comparing three, 30 years ago, 30 years ago, we drink about 100 uh, liter in a year. However, now we drink uh, 80, uh, 80 liter. We decreased uh, 20 per, by 20%. And this is a trend of alcohol beverage sales. The sales is not drastically uh, decreased, like a main keep the certain amount. However, so in the very, this is a uh, sake, uh, the amount of sake produces. It is, it is natural drink. However, the uh, share is very becoming smaller. And so this is the number of producers and the production. Especially comparing 30 years ago or 40 years ago, the number of producers become one half. And also the production is one third of the, comparing the 40 years ago. Okay. So sake is a natural drink. However, now, uh, because of some uh, many reasons, one is, you know, uh, we have now many uh, how, how can I say? Now we have many. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I forget the word. <laughs> yeah, many choices. You know, the, uh, regarding alcoholic beverage, and also consumers' taste uh, become diversified, and also younger generation drink less alcoholic beverage. So. We have uh, the industry have to do, we have to recover the production and sales of sake in order to uh, maintain our business, of course, and also because we have a long history, so uh, we think to 
maintain our business is to maintain and uh, sometimes to rec uh, recover the, to the Japanese good culture. So we try, uh, we have to try harder. We, we have to try harder in order to keep this tradition of sake and sake culture. Unfortunately, the sales uh, is decreasing. However, the many uh, these days, many younger generation, the younger sake producers uh, started to try to the wide variety of sake. So uh, we in the industry is going want to keep this uh, tendency and also to promote sake, especially among, uh, among young generations in order to keep the uh, sake culture for the future. So I'm sorry, so my bad English. So if you have some, uh, you have some new understanding of sake, so I, I, I think I'm very happy. So that after finishing this symposium, so we have a sake tasting, and also I uh, read, I read it, I bring the two sakes, so please enjoy my sake and other sakes as well. Thank you very much. Uh, so next we have Shimizu. So uh, then, uh, move on to the ti title, Internationalization of Sake. Uh, under this title, uh, the ma main purpose of my presentation is to explain how the National Tax Agency, NTA, uh, promotes the sake for overseas market. To begin with, the, uh, let's explain the uh, ex relationship between the sake industry and the uh, national tax agency. Why the national tax agency is a supervisor for alcohol beverage industry? Uh, there are two reasons to be explained. Firstly, the tax on Alcohol beverage has been historically an uh, important resource of tax, tax revenues. The government uh, has to secure the revenues from the industry. Secondly, the alcohol drink causes uh, intoxication. The government uh, would be better to intervene the industry to tackle with the intoxication caused by the alcohol beverage. The first slide shows the uh, trend of the tax revenue. Blue bar shows the uh, total tax revenue from the alcohol beverage. Uh, line chart shows the total taxable quantity uh, of uh, alcohol beverage. The proportion of tax revenue on alcohol beverage is in the total tax revenue uh, recorded a historical high for more than 100 years ago. Uh, that's, uh, that is uh, Meiji era. But uh, since the World War II, the pr proportion has generally and gradually declined, and currently uh, it is stable at a level of 2% of tax revenue. And originally, uh, I thought uh, I'd like to explain the current situation of the industry and the market, but uh, this part of my presentation, uh, I think, was already kindly explained by Mr. Mr. Sarasan, so <laughs> I, I want to skip these parts. Then, uh, the NTA uh, is not only the regulator, but also the promoter of sake. Uh, 
against the, the background of the current uh, industry situation and the market situation, NTA recently makes various efforts to promote sake for overseas market. First of all, oh, the PR for the mass. An example is that the NTA set up the exhibition booth at the Ishishima Summit, the Olympic or the Paralympic game, and other international arenas. Another example <coughs> to uh, NTA makes a brochure to mainly explain the terminology of sake uh, in foreign languages and uh, distribute, distributing. So, and you can also download this brochure from the website. Secondly, uh, uh, NTA wants to raise awareness uh, from the overseas experts. Uh, example, one example is to NTA organize a guided tour to breweries for diplomats based in Tokyo. Another example is uh, NTA invites the foreign specialists in the food and beverage industry and uh, organize a master class for them. Thirdly, uh, support for ex export. NTA uh, publishes and protect of GI, uh, geographical indexation, uh, indication. Currently under the Japan EU EPA, uh, which came into effect uh, from <coughs> this month, uh, applying for uh, currently UK, uh, Nihonshu uh, as a national level, and Yamagata and Haksan as a regional level are protected. Fourthly, uh, support for inbound. In a broader context, the Japanese government uh, uh, welcome and promote the uh, tourism for uh, foreigners. And you can uh, imagine easily that the wine lovers uh, enjoy to visit to wineries and taste, uh, whiskey lovers to the distilleries, why not to the sake lovers to the breweries? Uh, the government uh, uh, back up to the uh, tourism for sake breweries. It already uh, introduced the uh, tax measure to exempt the alcohol tax on sake sold for foreign tourists <coughs> as uh, authorized breweries. Thanks to the uh, uh, efforts by breweries, the distributors, and uh, thanks to the sake uh, lovers, the export of the sake has increased uh, gradually and uh, rap gradually. And uh, main uh, foreign market for sake is that the largest the USA and uh, then the East Asian countries. UK is the largest uh, export market uh, in the Europe. So we will continue to uh, promote uh, sake in UK as well as, as uh, other countries. Thank you for your attention. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Hiroshisa Ichihashi from Jetro. So uh, in my presentation, I'd like to talk about sake from the view of uh, trade and business. And uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, most parts of my presentation will be rather negative. So, <laughs> uh, so it will be uh, especially discouraging for Mr. Sawa. And that uh, I think uh, understanding the current situation properly is necessary to think about next step for sake. So, uh, please be patient. <laughs> so, uh, before talking about sake, uh, I'd like to explain ourselves. We are JETRO. JETRO is Japan External Trade Organization, and we are a government-related organization. So, we are not government itself, but strongly related with government. So, most of our budget comes from Japanese government, and we are working on behalf of Japanese government. 
And uh, we are working to promote export from Japan, uh, export from Japan, and investment to Japan. Uh, so we are uh, working in two different directions, from one from Japan to the rest of the world. This is export of made in Japan products, and the other direction is from rest of the world into Japan. This is foreign direct investment. So we are trying to uh, contribute to the growth of Japanese economy in these two ways. And we have 46 offices in Japan, we cover all, all of Japan, and uh, 74 offices in 40, 54 foreign countries. So we cover almost all of the world. And in Europe, we have 14 offices in 13 countries, London, Paris, Berlin, Dusseldorf, uh, and so on. And London is the largest uh, office in Europe. And uh, we are responsible not only for the UK, but also for Ireland, uh, Sweden, Finland, uh, Norway, and Iceland. So we cover these six countries. Uh, so then I, uh, let's move on to sake. Uh, first of all, uh, let's, I, I'd like to overview the world market of sake. Uh, sake uh, export from Japan to the rest of the world in 2018 was 25.7 million liters and 153 million pounds, and about one fourth of them went to the US. The largest is US, second is Korea, the third is China. These three countries are about more than half of the market. And I have to say, this uh, figures, 25.7 mil million liter and 150 million pounds, these are still very small. Uh, so looking at uh, domestic uh, market in Japan, uh, sake is consumed uh, 525 million liter uh, within Japan uh, in 2017. So only 5% of sake is exported to the world. And uh, compared with whiskey, for example, in Japan, uh, imported whiskey from UK, most of them are Scotland, from uh, 221 million pounds. So, you know, uh, whiskey market only within Japan is larger than uh, sake market in the world, uh, other than Japan. So, sake is now mostly consumed within Japan, so very domestic and local product. And looking at the UK, uh, sake export from Japan to the UK in 2018 was 0 0.3 million liter and 2.2 .2 million pounds. So uh, looking at the whole world, very tiny share. But yeah, in, the, in Europe, uh, UK is one of the largest market of sake. So then uh, looking at the UK market, in 2018, the total value of agricultural and fishery products exported from Japan to the UK was uh, 45.5 million pounds, and sake was the eighth largest product among them. So uh, first uh, is soy sauce, the other is, uh, uh, second is the other food preparation, the third is beef loin, and sake comes to the eighth place. So yes, sake is uh, one of the most important uh, products, uh, food and drinks, uh, exported from Japan to the UK. And looking at long-term trend, the volume of sake exported from uh, Japan to the UK fluctuate around 0 0.3 million liters. So it sometimes increase but decrease. Then in total, on average, yeah, it's fluctuating around 0 0.3 million liters for these 15 years. So I have to admit that it's not increasing that much. And uh, looking at the whole market of alcohol in the UK, uh, alcohol drink sales in the UK in 2017 was uh, 40.3 billion pounds, so very huge. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, po population is half of Japan, as the alcohol market is uh, two times larger than Japan. <laughs> And this means that the market share of sake in, in the UK in 2017 was estimated as between 0.01% to 0.1%, so very, very tiny share. And uh, alcohol consumption per person in the UK is showing a decreasing, decreasing trend. This is the same as Japan. And this is uh, this black line is total consumption. And this can be broken down into Increasing trend of off-trade. Off-trade means retail consumption, a supermarket, yeah. And the uh, decreasing trend of on-trade consumption, on-trade on pub uh, or restaurant. So this means that people less drink outside and drink at home more. But in total, consumption is decreasing. And uh, now, one problem. Sake is mostly consumed on-trade, also 
in restaurants, so especially Japanese restaurants, and uh, you know this uh, decreasing trend of the market is shrinking year by year. So this is a problem for our side. So we need to strengthen off trade this increasing trend market. We have to strengthen this uh, market. But now we uh, yes, this is our problem, and so. Next, I'd like to talk about price of sake. Uh, we calculated unit price of 81 sake sold in the retail stores in the UK. A unit price is a price per 10 million ethanol, so pure uh, price per pure alcohol. So we can compare uh, different categories of uh, alcohol drinks by using this unit price. And the uh, results show that 3 point, uh, there are 3 point, 3 points uh, uh, per unit is the most frequent pricing distance. So looking at other major uh, liquors, for example, wine, 0 0.79 uh, pound per unit is average. So 3.8 times more expensive uh, than wine on average uh, sake is. So, you know, uh, sake seems to be too expensive to try, I have to say. And uh, next slide is also about price, but I broke down the components of a price. Uh, according to our investigation, retail price of sake in the UK is more than five times expensive than its producer price. So uh, when I assume a producer price is 100, uh, it will be a re uh, five, 541 in the retail price. So more than five times expensive than producer price. And this is the components of the price. Uh, distribution cost insurance and others, this is 44%. And uh, marine transport shipment is 10%. VAT is 70%. Excess duty, alcohol duty is 10%. And tariff is very small, 0.2%. And producer price is 90%. So transport and distribution cost accounts for more than 50% of retail price of sake. And taxes account for about 30%. So, you know. <laughs> So we are facing a kind of cycle uh, because of a uh, smaller value, uh, volume of sake sales, uh, higher transport and distribution costs, and, and this causes, causes a higher retail price and results in smaller sales. So we have to change this uh, kind of bad cycle into a positive cycle. Uh, next, uh, this is a uh, very positive content. Uh, evaluation of sake. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jutro organized a uh, sake stand in Imbibe Lab. Uh, Imbibe Lab is one of the largest uh, alcohol trade show in the UK. And we asked uh, visitors to our stands. Uh, most of them are professional people like familiar and barmen or restaurant staff. And uh, to my surprise, uh, they, they intentionally visited us. So they have uh, clear uh, recognition about sake. And most of them have very, very positive uh, image about sake, like high quality, sophisticated, or not selective in food. So uh, they, these professional people have very good image and very uh, evaluate sake very highly. Uh, this is very good news for us. And, but, and uh, I, we also asked them about disadvantage of sake, and most of them pointed out not perceived by consumers. So, Sake is still very mysterious, un un unfamiliar, unknown for ordinary consumers. So professions, professional people know about sake and they understand sake has very good quality and a yeah, very unique character, uh, but this is unknown by usual consumers. So this is the most disadvantage for sake. So then these professional people advised us to, to, to have more pro promotional activities uh, uh, yes, to get perception. So let me summarize my presentation. Uh, the UK sake market is one of the largest in Europe, but still small uh, compared uh, compared with US or Asian countries. And moreover, the total sake market other than Japan is still small compared with other major liquor. Uh, for example, the total sake market other than Japan almost equals Scotch whiskey market only in Japan. And the UK sake market is not growing in volume for the long term in these 15 years. So we have to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then next uh, uh, summary two, the UK alcohol market is on, on the downward trend and alcohol consumption has been shifting 
shifting from on-trade to off-trade. And now, sake is mostly consumed on-trade. So we need to think from, uh, uh, off-trade sales. And uh, fortunately, we have a strategy for this. Uh, we are now planning to launch a Japanese food and drink mall in Okado. Maybe you know Okado. Okado is one of the uh, leading uh, online supermarkets in the UK. And uh, surely sake will be included in this uh, food mall. So uh, uh, we are planning to launch this in this September. Uh, maybe if you are a user of Okado and interested in buying Japanese food and sake, please visit this Okado site after September. And summary three, uh, on average, sake is 3.8 times more expensive than wine, and this is mostly because of the high transport costs. High price causes low demand, and low demand causes higher transport costs. So, and uh, at the same time, professionals in the UK point out lack of perception is the largest problem of sake. So, we need to create a good cycle of high demand, lower transport costs, lower price, higher demand by uh, promotional events. Uh, we have strategy. For this, a new organization named J Fudo was <laughs> yeah, it's very uh, <laughs> funny name, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and established in Jetro in 2017, and they are working in the UK to promote sake. For example, they launched a website named uh, Food and Sake, and they introduce a good combination between sake and local food like. Chip, uh, fish and chips or cheese, it, 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 they go very well with sake actually. <laughs> and uh, so, and they also introduce uh, restaurants where we can enjoy these combinations. So, if you are interested, please visit this site. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Ashton, and I'm the uh, director of the International Wine Challenge here in London. Now, I'm going to try and be positive, <laughs> okay? Uh, okay? So, what do we do? The International Wine Challenge is a big competition, one of the largest in the world, if not the largest. We taste about 15,000 wines a year, something like that. It's a good job I've got. <laughs> uh, but what we do is we, we, we're a th third party accreditor of wine and sake. So we try it, it's blind, I use some of the best judges in the world. Um, they try it blind and they give it a score or a medal to say this is a really good quality product. Okay, so it takes for the average person who doesn't know much about wine or sake, if you see one of our logos on a bottle, buy it because it's been through such a tough process to get there. But I've got a short video now that I'd like to just show you which will explain what we do. It's a marketing video, so don't listen to the sales messages, <laughs> but just, just you can see what we can do. Okay, so, what do we do? We get wine and sake entered from 55 countries, average one year. Our total amount of countries is about 68, something like that. So we get wines from everywhere, from Peru, Egypt. It's the first time this year, Egypt. Imagine that, vines in Egypt. Um, uh, we have over 15,000 wines, and we have an awards ceremony in, later in the year. 
where we have 21 big awards, but we do three for sake. And the sake ones are Sake Brewer of the Year, um, Great Value Sake, and Champion Sake, which is the big one. And the reason why we do that is the sake brewer that gets the most awards throughout the competition. Somebody who's really pushing the boundaries. This year, a guy had never entered the competition before, got five gold medals. Outstanding. This whole range of sake is outstanding. The Great Value Awards are ones we do that are under a price point. This is really targeted in Japan to push sales of lower cost alcohol, lower cost sake. So it's got to be under a thousand yen. It's got to be available everywhere. Okay, so the average person can go and see a trophy standard, world class product. Okay, those sales are tremendous sales. They go through the roof instantly. Okay. Um, so, so what we tried, oh, we've got Champion Sake. Champion Sake, it goes crazy. I've never seen a reaction like it. The guys here, when they come over for the awards, they win. It's their best day of their lives. One guy's won it twice. He's had two good best days of his life. <laughs> um, um, but it, then it, it translates back to Japan. And then it translates to everywhere else around the world because everybody wants to get it. And I've seen some real, real heartwarming stories of change that has happened. You know, we've been around doing sake for 12 years, and that's a blink of an eye in the sake industry. But so much has changed in that last 12 years, and what has happened, in, and it's still happening to the sake industry. And it's, it's fabulous and fascinating all at the same time. So, when we launched sake back in 2007, and Sora-san was in, the guy who spoke first, Sora-san down there, he was, he was the guy who was the president of the Sake Samurai, who came to us, got us involved with a lady called Toshi Hirade, over in Japan, to get sake into the competition. We hadn't judged it before. So we got more people involved, we got some experts involved, we started small. In the first competition we had, I can't remember this, 228 sake. Okay, we had uh, five categories at the time. We judged those um, and we had our winner. And over the years, we've increased that volume of sake coming through. And last year we had uh, 1,647 sake. Oh, we've now got nine categories. The categories are growing. And it's, re it's really difficult. Imagine you can win champion sake with 220 odd against 1,600. Now, it's really tough to win champion sake now. So the, the quality is exceptional. It really is exceptional. And it goes through a real process of judging, a judging process which is second to none. You can see how we, these are all the, white, all the sake is getting ready. This was in Yamagata last year where we did the competition and um, they're all laid out so that we can put those so we can access them quickly when we're doing the competition. Okay, so what do we do? We get um, wine and sake judges. It's the same process for wine and sake. Uh, we have journalists, wine buyers, masters of wine, and the panel chairs are consistent, so we try and keep our panel chairs every year. Um, and the judges may change every, every now and again, and every day they will change, but our panel chairs say the same, and so do our co-chairs. It's consistency, okay? Um, in, in Saki, you might see, we know a few of these faces here in the wine industry, Oz Clark there, everybody know Oz Clark, you must know him, he's in our wine guys, and they're the Saki guys over there. And we're quite unusual, because it's an export market that Saki was came to the IDWC for, and that's what we've tried to provide. So an export market needs a mixture of different kinds of palettes, okay? Different taste values. <coughs> People taste differently in different parts of the world. People like in the West like sweeter things. They like salty things. Okay? In the East, it's less of that. It's more purity and softness and gentleness, more texture. I'm from Yorkshire, as you can probably hear. So I don't like a lot of texture in my food. So when I go to Japan, I sometimes I struggle because it's all texture based. Okay, so so you can see how we could give a global market or a global global view of the global market, which means that the new style sake, the more flavours and sake, is more better suited to the Western palate. It likes flavour. It likes difference. We are used to drinking wine. We've been doing it for centuries. Like the Japanese have been drinking sake for centuries. We've been drinking wine. And wine is so flavoursome. From, it does every broad, the, the broad spectrum of wine. And that's how people analyse it. You may notice that we use glasses rather than little ceramic cups. Ceramic cups don't give you aromas. You can't get aromas from them. So if you put it in a glass, you can swirl it, and you can get aromas. So you can get the full extent of that sake. And it really opens up. 
especially the new style where it's got high ethyl producing koji or flavor. You can taste melon and all sorts of different things, just like wine. The higher quality sakes are just outstanding. Now, we've got a bit of fun. These are three of my senior team. There's, you've got Yuji, um, we've got uh, John Gartner on that end, and Jennifer, she's a master of wine. Now, we've got on palates, not ethnicity. So Yuji there, Yuji, is a Japanese guy. Guess what palette he's got? He lives in California, he's a Western. He's got a Western, but he's lived in California for 35 years. He tastes like a Westerner, he tastes like an American. Jennifer, she's from Canada, but she's Chinese based. But she's lived, <coughs> lived over here for years, okay? She tastes like a Westerner. And John Gauntner, He's the don of sake in, um, or the sort of western don of sake in Japan. He's lived there for 40 years. He's Japanese. He <laughs> tastes like Japanese. Okay? And what we do is we mix those palates up with Japanese and western palates in the same team. So nobody can override anything. So it's all about discussion. And what you find is that those people that are working together come up with a consensus view, a, a global view. If only our politicians could do that, it would be wonderful, <laughs> wouldn't it? So, so we come up with this view of a sake on a global sector. So this is why exports have been introduced, because it's different kinds of sake, more flavoursome sake that's coming out there, which the Western palate, uh, palate likes. But also, because of the, the, the PR that we generate, it's gone crazy in Japan as well. When you win champion sake, when you win any of these big awards, believe me, they, it's madness. So, sake judges. We have 60 international judges, we have five judges at each table, so we have associates that start at the, at the bottom, you guys do it, come at the bottom and work their way up to co-chairs. So we judge, judge the sake, but we also judge the judges, and that's all done by peers, okay? You have to be a professional, you have to have, to have a WSET qualification to join, so if any of you guys just go on our website and have a look, you might be able to come and judge with us one day. So, sake in Japan. Now, this was really after the tsunami disaster in 2011 when we, sake couldn't export, couldn't leave Japan, couldn't get into Europe, they just banned it straight away. Um, so, what could we do? So, we went to um, Tokyo in 2012 and did a competition there. It's a bit of a rush job, we had to do it at the end, and uh, we managed to get in. We did it at the uh, sake, sake brewer's offices in Tokyo. It was a bit, a bit of a squeeze, but we managed it. But everybody really enjoyed it. All the guys that are obsessed about sake who judge with us really enjoyed the experience. So we started thinking, could we do this again? And then Hyogo invited us down there four years ago, and we did a competition there, and it was a revelation. All these sake exports, experts that come from around the world. I've got, I've got Canadians, New Zealanders, Americans, Spanish, Italians. They all come and judge with us, spreading the gospel of sake. So they come to Japan, <coughs> learn more about Japan, really get embedded in Japan. This year, we were in, last year we were in Yamagata. It was, it was just a fabulous, we were there for a week. But we saw a Japan that people don't really see out, out in the countryside with onsens. It was a beautiful week, I had a great time. I was there for three, actually. Um, um, but it means that all these people here, all these people that go and judge, are then going back to their home countries and spreading the gospel about sake. And that's creating more interest. Most of those people are involved in either uh, selecting sake for restaurants, buying sake, putting it on retail shelves. So that world is growing. So what is also happening? The, Wine and Spirit Education Trust, WSET, um, are involved in sake and wine education around the globe. They, a few years ago, they launched a, a, a sake course, which is a level one and level three. So you can learn about sake. And more and more people are doing this. It's an official qualification, takes a bit of time, it's not expensive. I think you can do a level three for about 350 pounds, something like that something like that, and it's, it's about four days, four or five days work, it's a week's work, something like that, I think like three to five, I don't know, something like that. So you can come out of there with a real qualification and a really deep understanding of sake. Okay, it's worth doing. But now what's also happening is, because sake is quite popular over here now, is the masters of wine are getting involved. They want to know about sake. 
So we've crossed that bridge now when the true well, global experts on wine are now wanting to know about sake. So they're learning. So I quite enjoyed the fact when a master of wine comes to me and said, can I judge sake? So said, yeah, go and do your WSET level three, please, and then come back. You know, level three's here, master of wine's way up there. Um, so, so that's also spreading the news about, about sake. So that's making it more of a global product. Now, a few years ago, we launched a new category. So sparkling sake. Who's ever had sparkling sake? Put your hands up. Great. It's a great introduction to sake. I was really keen on getting into the competition. Well, Japan was a little bit, well, it's, it's not really a serious sake. But it's an introduction to sake. When in the, in the West, when you turn 18, you don't all of a sudden go, right, I'm on the, I'm on the whiskey now. My son did, suddenly doesn't. You don't go straight from doing nothing to the top stuff. You don't go from drinking a glass of Pinot Grigio to 5,000 pound bottles of Petrus. You just don't do it. You work your way up. So if we can engage people by getting in an entry level, everybody loves bubbles. Everybody loves a bit of fizz. So if we can engage them by drinking fizz, or fizzy sake, which is only 22 years old, I think. Ichinokoro was the first one. So they're only 22 years old, sparkling sake. So if we can engage people and get people involved in sake, in sparkling sake, they will then move up. They'll go, that's nice, but what's next? And then you can go through the Honjozo, Junmais, and really go through the Junmai Daginjos to the really serious stuff. Okay? Um, it's gone crazy in London, especially. Sparkling sake is involved in lots of cocktails. All the mixologists are getting involved with it. It's just a really light, a little bit sweeter drink and it's also going really well in Japan. The younger, younger element are trying to realize and this is actually quite good. And sometimes it just takes somebody else to tell you you've actually got something that's really good. So if we can tell as Westerners over here, can tell Japan that their national product, which is sake, is world class stuff. It's world class beverage. They're taking more notice. So the younger people are now trying, trying to get into sake, trying to, everybody I speak to, and I know the numbers might not stack up, but this is a long game. Right? Get them involved in sparkling sake now. Please try some. It's lovely stuff. And then move on. <coughs> Promotion and PR, what do we do? We spread the message of wine and sake all over the world. I think uh, last year our, um, our stats were about 1.4 billion impressions across the globe of the International Wine Challenge. So, you know, we are widely recognized. And it's only because of our judges and the way we judge. Okay, so we can make lots of things happen for all the entrants. Um, and Champion, this is some of the numbers. 30% sales increase, I think Champion Sake was. Well, this is some feedback from some of the guys. So the Champion Sake within two weeks after the announcement, which was normally sold in six months. It goes crazy. But I've got a lovely story. There's a guy down in... Uh, Saga Prefecture, who won Champion Sake in 2011, I think. And um, in Saga, there's only four breweries in the town. And um, uh, they have a sake festival every year, and about 3,000 people turned up, which is about the population of the village. Okay? And he won Champion Sake. And Toshi Arade was there, and she went down to Saga and spoke to the mayor, spoke to the tourist office, spoke to everyone who would listen, saying, make something in this festival. When they did the first festival, 30,000 people turned up because it won Champion Sake. It was crazy. There was nowhere to stay. There was nowhere to park. It was just madness. They hadn't, the success was unbelievable. And I saw him last year at an event I was at, and I saw, you know, how's the, how's the festival going? And he said, we had 85,000 people there this year. And that has brought wealth and prosperity to the whole region, to the whole place. All the hotels are full, you know, every, but all the other sake brewers are also selling their sake as well. So it's turned into a real thing. We're doing the same thing in Fukushima after the disaster that those guys are going through, you know. Um, they've had two champion sakes now. You know, it, it's just, it's changing. It, we went to meet the mayor, me and Rio went to meet the mayor a few years ago, and he was going to use us as, as a part to regenerate. So this is, that doesn't happen in wine, really. I see why I think I'm so engaged with sake, because everybody gets involved. It's a real community thing. And, that, you know, sake being Japan and Japan being sake is so true. Everybody's involved. 
And that's just something that I find fascinating and unique, and I love it to bits. So the promotion, you can see, but all our news, when we get our news out, it goes out. So when our results go out, bang, it's everywhere. Within 24 hours, all the countries know it. And there is sake increasing all over the place. And just, so just uh, you, I read some notes earlier on about the reduction in alcohol sales. That's a global thing. There is a reduction in alcohol sales across the globe in wine, in beer, in everything, because we're all trying to be a bit healthier. All right, there are peaks, there are some other things that are increasing within it, but generally alcohol sales are down globally, so don't be too disheartened, it's a global product. Okay, I think we're coming to the end now. That's it, well thank you, I hope I've brought some cheer onto your faces. Thank you. So good evening, uh, if not a good afternoon. Okay, I'm the last speaker, and uh, my friend is just uh, helping out for a uh, slide. I'm not good at the figures anyway, <laughs> so you will see a lot of pictures instead. <laughs> um, well, my name is Ria, and I call myself a sake promoter, and uh, I think passionately every day I'm doing. I think about sake when I go to bed and I wake up <laughs> thinking about sake every day. It's feeling like almost alcoholic, but not yet. <laughs> and uh, actually, I never thought I would be promoting sake like this when I came here 30 years ago. So I want to just talk about myself a bit. Because sake in Japan when I was young, unfortunately, without disrespect to Saura-san, I hated sake because sake was not really good in terms of quality and also in terms of the image. To me, it was like an old man's working class, you know, and also not very, how do you say, sophisticated, not for the ladies at all. So I rather wanted to stay away. So I started fine wine business and got involved in this country. Then 13 years ago, when, as Chris said, uh, International Wine Challenge started um, launching uh, sake. International um, Sake Samurai Association, you might have heard of it because we promote it under the name of Sake Samurai a lot came to me saying, please help to, you know, launching the International Wine Challenge second competition. And so you can imagine how I felt, you know. It's, I'm not really sure if I want to do. But when I started tasting sake, and I just thought, oh my goodness, this is no longer the sake I used to know. Sake has actually transformed itself into the most beautiful, sophisticated drink. Maybe it was 30 years ago. Things like a ginjo came out in the uh, market. That was beautiful transformation. That's another reason why it is now uh, becoming popular. So um, we started. Then uh, what? When I started, I'm oh, sorry, that's come here. When I started sake promotion, I was, the more I tasted sake, I just started noticing that sake is not just a drink, not just an alcohol, but something through sake you can get into Japan. It's almost like a tunnel. It's, it is the spirit of Japanese people. It's a philosophy, culture, tradition, and even economic like, reason, like a diplomacy. It's so concentrated. Sake has an incredible diplomatic power. It's not a, just a drink. So, um, as I started sitting, just looking at the sake, it doesn't help me. So I thought, where I can promote sake. So I kind of targeted five places. Let's keep this one. And the first place, in order to raise the profile of sake, 
we, together with Saura-san, the, the, at the time the founding chairman of the Sake Association, we got into the parliament and managed to serve Sake at the opening of the uh, parliament where Queen was there. And like that, uh, we are now promoting sake at the British Japanese Parliamentary Group every year. Then, of course, we are passionately promoting sake at the embassies of Japan. So every time you go to the embassies, today Mr. Uh, Minister Okada is kind of coming here to help us. Uh, we always have a nice sake for the visitors uh, at the event. So that helps a lot. Thank you very much for the embassy. And um, also, sake, go, sake loves money. <laughs> we go to the city, of course. There are lots of rich and uh, you know, young elite people where we introduce sake at possible events like a bankers, and it is obviously they are the drinkers of sake. They are, you know, sake is kind of expensive side, so we always doing that. And obviously, as you know, sake is such a great hospitality too. So we now managing using the beautiful events like a sport event. On the left, this was a ascot. Thanks to the Japanese uh, JRA, Japanese Racing Association, we go to Ascot, and instead of champagne, we give away this uh, sparkling sake. They actually love it. And also, as a World Cup next year is coming, we go to the um, rugby scene to promote sake for the more inbound attraction. People come to Japan, please, and enjoy sake. So that's the scene we are uh, doing, and it's, it's this year, that be. Ah, <laughs> here, this is something I really strongly believe that the reason why we are here for, I mean, the universities in London, this is not the student, this is not the just the university, they are the, uh, how can I say, young world leaders. Um, so I go to Oxford, Cambridge, and to set up the uh, sake sort of association. Um, the last time when I did sake course um, seminar, about 40 countries from the different countries, and they are really enjoying sake. So, you know, I have to say that the Japanese government doesn't believe promoting into uh, young stars like a student because they don't have money and they get drunk. But <laughs> it's not always the case. I really think Japan must put money to the university education because there are also people who have an opinion uh, leaders to the world. Don't you agree? Yes. <laughs> and as now I'm coming to the sort of a, uh, way how I promote sake when I reach those people. Imagine if I go out, when I go outside of London, believe it or not, not many people know about sake. Some, many people never had sake. Or some people have a very wrong impression, I mean the bad uh, misconception I call it. So what I do is I on purposely present the misconception, I have about five, then turn into the benefit and the attraction because people just, you know, introducing this new thing is quite in easy because it's so new, here we are. But sake has been quite a long time in this country with quite a bad image. I'm sorry to say. So we needed to rectify it to move forward. That's how I feel we should be doing. First thing I always do is the strength of sake. If you give the sake to the, somebody who hasn't, you know, know about sake, they will come like this. They always think sake is so strong, just like a spirit. Perhaps the image of drinking sake in a small cup makes them to think in that way. Do you know why we drink 
suck in a, such a small cup? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some students said maybe Japanese is so small. <laughs> 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 but, uh, well, it's true, we don't have a, such an enzyme to digest alcohol. But the reason is, as saura san explained first, sake 2,000 years ago about. Sake was made to offer to the God to protect us and, uh, you know, with a gratification and share amongst the people. So sake was made to, you know, bring people together pouring for you and he pours for me back. So it's like a small sort of rituals to drink together not to drink by yourself. So that was another reason why we are drinking in a small cup. The other thing is, like Chris mentioned, sake, nowadays, good sake has a aroma you can enjoy. But in the past, sake didn't have any sort of aroma to, to enjoy it. So that's why I think it was okay with a cup, even without enjoying the nose. But anyway, what I wanted to say is sake is not that strong. It's not alcoholic horror. It is about 14, 15, 16, slightly higher than wine. So I keep saying, no, this is just like a wine, slightly higher, but drink just like a wine. Next one is misconception again, temperature. All the people, all the generation like me, who had sake before here, especially, thinks that the sake has to be drunk warm or hot. Actually, the answer is yes and no, because sake is very unusual drink that sake can be enjoyed at a different temperature. Say, even on the rock, you know, you can put the ice in it, or even warm like a 55 at maximum, don't boil it. But likewise, sake, if you have a one bottle, let's say, you can start enjoying very chill. Then room temperature and warm it up. You will never notice this is the same sake. It changes, the, sensationally changes the character. So you should try it. So that's another thing, and uh, so you have a different way of drinking. That is actually sake daiginjo cup made by reed glass, so you can enjoy the glass with the nose. The another misconception which I'm going to do is food pairing. This is a big thing if everybody started understanding it. Sake is not only just Japanese food, but it goes beyond it. We have a very famous saying called, sake doesn't get in fight with the food. Sake wa ryori wo erabanai. It has been said for a long time. I think this is kind of reflecting Japanese uh, philosophy, you know, hate, peace loving. It doesn't get aggressive like a wine, because wine, imagine, wine has a tanning and also high acidity. These two are the ones which tend to fight. That's why sommeliers has to work hard not to, to prevent it. But the sake is really forgiving, uh, you know, liquid, so you can enjoy with a different thing. That's what um, uh, Ichihashi-san mentioned at uh, J Fudo. The new organization is promoting these ideas. And um, I show you a couple of things. You, in this country, it will work. If you have a chance to have a caviar, <laughs> try with the sake. You know, champagne, vodka, people say, but this caviar and the sake is incredibly beautiful. And also smoked salmon, oyster to die for. You can even put the uh, sake into that and just swallow at one go. <laughs> it is really, really good. We've been trying all the time. She's actually the expert for promoting oyster and the sake. <laughs> and um, I like bongole making by myself. So I use sake 
when I took the uh, bongole, and also drink with a fresh uh, sake. So I hope you try. Many people think sake only goes with the fish, but that's wrong too. We have incredibly uh, refreshing, sparkling sake, which was perfect. We did the must of wine tasting together. Uh, fish and the chips and sake, this is really, you know, cool at the moment. And the calamari, again, you know, it reflects, uh, remove the um, oiliness. And the rich um, beef with a little bit aged big sake. And parmaham is always so nice because so, a little bit salty food goes sake very well. We went to India the other day all together and promote the sake with Indian food. It was fantastic. Mm. So we really, with a confident, uh, you know, Indian food and wine is a very difficult match, as you know. But it's, try with the sake how you feel. And uh, obviously, cheese, fermented, sake fermented is a good match. And even with the chocolate. Today we are having um, dessert sake like that. And uh, if you, there's any chocolate, please try with. So another thing is sake is not just the only one kind. We have a, lots of lots of different types of sake, which is perhaps even too many, in my opinion. <laughs> and uh, it is more than wine, a bit too complicated. And for example, classification, like, uh, you know, in terms of the wine, we have a Grand Cru, Premier Cru, like village, table sake. Unfortunately, Japan doesn't have a, such a straightforward way. But instead, they have like a Junmai Dai Ginjo, Ginjo, Honjozo. Please do not ask what is what. But uh, it, <laughs> I kind of sympathize, you know, that unless you know the name, you would not know what sake its character is for, but this is something, if you love sake, you have to work a little bit harder to remember the character. Also, it is not the uh, class, but also we have a, the way we make it. We have again sparkling sake, cloudy nigori sake, also aged sake. Today, if you go to the tasting after this, we are serving a 31-year-old sake, which normally sake doesn't age well, but um, you know there are some sake which can live, uh, live long. So you mustn't go back without tasting that. It is very expensive too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, likewise, there are so many. And this is almost like a bonus. <laughs> I really, if I can promote sake without thinking of the organization, I will straight away tell you, sake is so good for your skin, so good for your health, because sake has an amino acid, which more than any other drink. And uh, there are lots of saying about this. Sake is the king of the medicine since long, long time. So, you know, relax on sake, and I hope you enjoy sake today and for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Before I um, explain how to get to the sake, um, I'd just like to thank all five speakers for a um, fascinating tour through the different perspectives of sake. So thank you so much for coming. <laughs>